muchachos! Welcome here! Today's video is a full-on homeschool video. You guys have been asking for a lot of homeschool type of content and I really hope that this video kind of just serves you guys in a lot of different ways when it comes to that. I'm gonna go over tools, books, what we use, why we use it, teaching our kids to read, to write, lots of stuff in today's video. I will have a blog post linked down below. It's gonna cover everything that I cover in today's video, but in written form, as well as having links to the books and tools that I talk about in today's video. There's a lot here. We're also going to show you guys kind of our daily homeschool routine, which honestly changes up a lot, but it'll give you an idea of what we do with our kids. I hope that you guys enjoy today's video, and let's just go ahead and get started. A quick disclaimer, if you don't homeschool your kids, I'm sure there's still a ton of stuff you can read from this video. In this video, I'm going to share with you guys how we set up our children so by the time they hit grade school they're already reading well they're writing comfortably they're good with numbers adding and subtracting uh, just some really key principles that we want our kids to have before they enter grade school I also want to say just because you don't teach your kids the way we do doesn't mean you're doing it wrong I'm just showing you guys what works well for us and our kiddos I have a little bit of a blurb written out about our kids but just to give you an idea of who our kids are where they're at and you can kind of see if this would work for your kids as well. So we have a five-year-old Ivy. She's been reading since the age of four. Soon after that, we started to get her to write, but before she wrote, we wanted her to have a solid grasp on reading. Now she adds and subtracts numbers easily and loves learning about scientific things and how things work. Calvin, who is three, three and a half years old, knows his ABCs and is getting a better knowledge of them through card work and us also teaching him sign language and the sign language alphabet. He can count and knows how to add and subtract numbers. He really loves music and music enrichment classes, book reading, and learning about the earth and animals. Next is Elizabeth. She's two. She knows her colors, her shapes. She is also learning sign language very slowly, but this is going to help her later with letters and reading and writing. She likes anything sensory, so crafts, puzzles, organizing, shapes, colors. As of right now, she's hugely being introduced to numbers and letters, and she loves doing card work. So that is where my kids are at. As for a typical homeschool day, every single day is different. We change things up every single day uh, from, from everything going on around us. Everything just kind of influences what's going on in our day when it comes to homeschooling our kids. The weather, how our kids are feeling, how we are feeling, maybe looking towards tomorrow and thinking it's better to tackle science or music then and we can tackle this here. Every single day changes and homeschooling gives us the ability to really kind of work with our kids and where they're at on a certain day versus Versus maybe having to work against them. There is a little bit of a, well, you may not want to do this right now, but you still have to, but it's not hugely introduced just yet because again, they're in a preschool kindergarten era and not just yet into grade school. I just like being able to tackle what I think would be best for my child in the moment and how they would grow and learn and develop better in maybe doing copy books or science versus doing something more tactical every day it's different. So we really kind of depend on so many different factors when it comes to what we're going to teach the kids that day. So before our kids hit grade school, I just have a list of things that we want them to be able to do. We want them to be able to read confidently, write well, have a solid base on numbers, basic math, no staple things, where do we live, our country, days of the week, months of the year, seasons, holidays, and certain historical characters. So um, here's how we do that. Here's how we equip our kids to know those things and enjoy those things. So here's kind of like a typical homeschool day. Uh, it's a lot of info. There's a lot of stuff going on. It's kind of busy, but I hope that you guys enjoy. Ivy, you can get your number book and your copy book. So I'd like you to do some of both. Are you just going to be coloring? You're coloring. Can you grab your tracing book, Cal, even if you just do a couple pages before your abacus? What? Is this this page? Is this what I want to know? Thanks, by the way. No. What color is it? You can't spell Ivy? Look, I spell Ivy. You want me to spell Ivy with you? Yeah, I like it. Oh, the triangle. I have to do the triangle. It's like a flag. 
Okay, this a is also a line. Oh, stay right on these lines, Cal. Yep, there you go. Oh, this looks like a cook. Yep, there you go. Good job, stay right on So we have different workbooks for Ivy and Calvin. Elizabeth, she just sticks to coloring. Sometimes we'll bring out puzzles and different things for her to kind of put together and figure out or sort. But I really like starting with workbooks uh, for the beginning of our homeschool routine. Yeah, there you go. And I can link their workbooks down below. I like starting off with workbooks because I feel like yeah, you can do the bottom. The reason I like to start with workbooks is because I feel like at the beginning, it's kind of nicest to get the hardest thing over with. Not that workbooks are hard, but it can be hard for the kids to actually sit down and stay still and work on something. And focus. And focus. <laughs> <laughs> so Calvin's book is just tracing. It helps him with motor skills. It started off with simple, simple shapes, connecting the dots. It just helps him to learn how to hold a pencil comfortably for him and trace on all these lines. And I find that this works really well for him, Ellie, in her coloring book. And then Ivy has a couple workbooks. And let me show you guys. So we have this built-in bench. I've shown it before, but it has a bunch of the kids' school stuff in it which is perfect and easy for them to grab and reach. And then for Ivy's workbooks, she just finished this one. I really liked this one. It's super simple. You can get it off of Amazon, but it goes over kind of the basics and then like the workings of the body. So that was a really cool activity book. She also has her copy book by Memoria Press. This one is so great. The beginning of this book was all the letters of the alphabet and then it brings you into actually doing script and then drawing pictures that go along with it. This is more curriculum based, so don't know if I can link that down below, but we got it from a local homeschool store. We've also introduced more math, so we were really focusing in on more reading and then writing with Ivy, and now we're focusing in on math. This book is called Preschool Math. It's, su it's super, super basic, nothing fancy, but if you want something affordable and easy to get, it is on Amazon, so she's tracing out the number 10, the word 10, and then she's gonna do some workbook stuff around that number. I'm trying to figure out why I felt so weird. I wasn't wearing my rings or my earrings. I always feel so weird. So in here, I have some more homeschooling stuff, some of the kids craft stuff and puzzles. I think as a homeschooling mom, one of the main things to focus on is where you're going to store everything and how you're going to store it because you're gonna have a lot of crafts and curriculum and cards and books on hand. So we have this place where we store a bunch of stuff as well as the like underneath bench in the dining room and some other places here and there throughout the house where we just store stuff where it makes sense to keep their things for learning and homeschool. Right now I'm gonna take out the abacus because we're gonna do some abacus work. So you see on this page I want you to really focus. You see this one under the line a little bit. That's your foundation line. Let me get you a different pencil because this one isn't gonna work. Or I'll sharpen this one. So you see all these, they went a little bit too far under that foundation line. You wanna keep them above but that line. I made them in a major because there's no room for them in the end. That's right. Do you feel like it's a little too short or do you think you can use it still? I can oh. do this too. Yeah, it should be okay. Yeah. You wanna play with this one? Yeah! Okay, that is looking good, Ivy. I can tell you're working really hard. That looks great. Try sitting on a pencil, it'll make you a little bit higher. There. <laughs> This we got from Amazon and I can link it down below, but again, it's just kind of sorting, it's just sorting <laughs> shapes and colors. And then if you flip it over, you can learn about fractions as well. This is something that's easy for Elizabeth to play with. Oh, look in there. And it's just good for motor skills. So let's plus three black. Great job. Let's plus four dark green. 
you need to count out. Good job. And how many is that? Four. We also have a lot of dark midnight blue here. Let's minus three. Minus three. There you go, that's correct. Ivy's cleaning up colors. Ali is still going at that. Thank you. So right now me and Ivy are doing pattern work where I create a pattern at the top of the abacus and she has to copy it throughout the rest of it. So what is our pattern? One? One, two, a ten, eight. Eight? Yeah. One. Good job. Okay, let's make another pattern. Ready? What pattern? So you can tell. Two in the middle. So take two fingers. You're gonna go like this. That's it, gentle. That's it. Uh, plus five pink. <laughs> There you go. Let's see if Papa will do some music with you guys. You want to do some moussaka? Yes, moussaka. Yeah. Moussaka. Moussaka. Kieran is going to do some music stuff with the kids. This is another place that I store some of the kids' curriculum and books. I like to follow music enrichment. Kieran doesn't because Kieran is smarter than me. You don't really follow this, do you? Oh well, yeah, we already started the other one. Yeah. When it comes to music, Kieran is super smart with it because he did schooling for it. For me, not so much, so I rely on this book. Again, this is by Memoria Press and it is a curriculum. So don't know if I can link this, but it is very good. We do have some reading stuff for Ivy and Calvin in here and I'll show that to you guys in a little bit. I also like these. We've read through this one. Who is Thomas Alva Edison? I'd like to read through Isaac Newton. And then we have just other school books that are nice to dig into here and there. But Kieran is gonna do some music schooling with the kids. Again, some things we try to do every single day and I feel like Kieran's really good at kind of just getting the kids into music every single day. And then some things we do a couple times a week. So it all kind of changes up. I'm going to show you guys some of the reading stuff for the kids too. And some of these strings here, they see they're different colors, so they're easier for the player to find. Raising the pitch means that the notes are higher on the scale. The piccolo plays notes with a very high pitch, and the tuba plays notes with a very low pitch. Gluck wrote it as part of his opera, Orpheo and Eurydice, which is about a magnificent musician and a sad story of his love for his young wife, who dies. Aww, so what sad. the heck? Can you mildly explain what you're doing? So you just read to the kids. It's just an introduction to various uh, composers, starting in the Baroque period and all the way through the modern period. And then, uh, and then it goes through uh, instrument by instrument or section by section. They give example um, classical pieces that the kids can kind of attach to uh, their, their understanding of how an instrument or a certain instrument works. Why, why are you pushing So right now, we just read about the harp. We've done, we've done the violin and the viola and the cello and the double bass. And we've gone through all of the composers, well, the, the, the brief sketch or outline of the composers that are in this book. And then uh, now we're in the harp, so we're in the middle, or near the end. We're, this is the last one in the string section. You guys section. are going to go to the woodwind section And then scene. we're doing woodwinds. Uh, tomorrow. So we, we use our TV for this part. We don't just turn it on Spotify or whatever. Um, it's I think it's important for the kids to see musicians playing and actually using the instrument. And also seeing them all play together. And we love this book, Meet the Orchestra. This is something I utilize more, but I'll turn on something Bach or uh, Rachmaninoff and as we're watching the orchestra I'll get the kids to point out the French horn or the clarinet or I make them close their eyes and they have to figure out what that instrument is and find it in here. See I didn't dive into music at all as a homeschooled kid. 
kind of wish I did. Because it's so cool. It sets you up for a lot of things. Listen to Mama. <laughs> Papa's going to do his. His is empty. And Mama has some water. Mm -hmm. I know, that's the thing. <laughs> you wanna try mine? Stage break. <laughs> Do these sound different? Wait, how did that come from a harp lesson? That was, we did, we also did an introduction to the woodwinds. Oh, Callan's just drinking my wine. <laughs> this is actually perfect that you're here, Kieran, because I want you to be here for this because I mean this is how I learned to read this is how you learn to read teach your child to read in a hundred easy lessons this is what my mom did for all of us kids you can get this off of Amazon I think by I mean what lesson was Abby on when she started reading like not huge books but like the small yeah well yeah when, when I, introdu I introduced we started this first and then when I was kind of looking for forward at the Bob books to see what kind of like sentence structure for these words here and because because the teacher child to read in 100 easy lessons goes through essentially sound by sound and then it brings in different vowel sounds it and makes it, and it just, so it just, much sense like it just as a builds, kid, it's very concrete and it just builds made a lot of sense. It builds from one to one hundred, essentially, all these different sounds. It's little stories or whatever that the kids are going to be reading as they go through. This is what I like about it, this. It's a, it's a start. Right? You do not have to be a teacher, someone who's taken no. classes. Like, there's a big you long can be... There's a big long... Sorry, I'm way out of frame. There's a big long introduction, right? That that really goes over what they're doing, it why they're doing it. It sets up every um, single parent. Yeah, it's the parent's guide. It sets up any type of parent to be able to teach their kids how to read. Yeah. So we started Ivy on this when she was four. She started comfortably reading. About half a year later, like yeah. there's a difference between being able to read and then picking up a book for fun. Yeah. You know. Um, She's five and she picks up books for fun now, uh, but starting her off on the Bob books was awesome. I never no. had Bob books growing up. No. We had a type of Bob book, like very much Matt and Cat, Sam, Matt and Cat. The easy, 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 but simple word structure. Super small. They're colorful, so the kids think they're cool. And um, there's different sets. So you get beginning readers. This is your kind of first set. Advancing readers start here and with the set one beginning readers for Bob books because I mean Ivy was reading yeah. like a maniac and the reason I wanted Kieran here was because Kieran really Kieran taught Ivy to read Kieran took it upon himself to be like I'm gonna teach Ivy to read and and that was awesome so this is how you did it and I saw how amazing it was and then from here I can show you guys some of Ivy's other books. Actually, can you get them? Soft and white? So these are the American language series and these are beautiful. They're illustrated beautifully and they're short stories, they're poems, they're whatever, and Ivy Sorry. easily will read through these. So I'll tell her, go grab a book and I want you to sit and take 10, 15, 20 minutes and just read through it. So that's one story, your next story kind of thing. So very, very simple. You really have to really gauge your child to see what they are capable of. And what, and a, what they, what they a, believe about themselves and, and B, what they are willing to do. Yes. And you can encourage them towards these things um, and, I, I, and go for it. Give your kids goals and structure. Yeah, they will yeah, and, and they will give them a ladder and they'll climb it, right? Absolutely. And, and uh, oh, I like that. Yeah. Give them a ladder and they'll climb it. Yeah, a uh, structure. That's cute. <laughs> so there's a lot of kind of, um, kind of messing around and, and doing random guesswork because it's like, oh, I don't know, maybe, maybe I remember pulling out some books that were way too advanced for Ivy at first. Um, that uh, that we just we put down and we've never really returned to, um, but that was that was just that's a learning process, right? Um, she's abandoned me to you guys. <laughs> you're just you're doing 
You're doing great. Really good concept is just read to your kids. Um, yeah, you child, can tell kids that haven't been read to yeah, and kids that 100%. have. A child, a child that has um, uh, not just not a vocabulary but experience with words, um, like being spoken to or read to or whatever, or just hearing words. Um, has a distinct advantage when they are learning that so that the more words they hear um, And specifically not like not like the simple you don't have to go over You know colors a, a million times um, But giving them words that stretch them and words that, they that don't they know. don't know but they can but they can begin to build upon like that's, Words they can't say yeah, word, yeah words they can't say is, is always fun you don't have to be intimidated just because you're intimidated if you had to learn all these things doesn't or whatever. Mean, doesn't mean your, your kids are. Your kids, your your kids, kids are just like, they're want whatever. It. Your they, kids, they'll take it. Yeah. They, they go crazy about it. Yeah. Um, and that's why, I mean, even with, we've been doing KiwiCo boxes, Kieran ordered it for the kids. Yeah. And the kids love it because it's books, it's information, it's hands-on. Like it's kids, also quality time with dad. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, but kids want to. Yeah. They want no, to learn totally. and they want to grow. And I think us as adults think, kids think it's a chore and it's not. Yeah, kids love that stuff. No misconceptions to the classroom essentially um, by you know sitting down with our kids and being like, oh, this is schoolwork. I remember schoolwork and it was terrible and. <sighs> you know, <laughs> you know, and then and then you know what your, your, like <laughs> your your kid your kid will will you know, but your yes. kid will pick up on that you know, or this is work you know, this isn't so fun. This you is need work. to this come at it. So at if you come at it as it differently or, or with a bit of if it's educational, but it, it doesn't have to be. Um, yeah. It doesn't have you don't have to give it don't sure. don't preload it with negative um, with negative emotion essentially. Encouraging our kids to not get through it. We're just trying to get through it, but yeah. to enjoy being in it. Yeah, exactly. That's, exactly. that's yeah. the mind. <laughs> You're not to is, do a full me. on, what is this, a lunge in order to get into the camera. This, this, is, this is me coming down to your level. You'll well, notice we're the same height. So right now it's, it's, uh, it's getting close to lunchtime, so usually we just we uh, stick. I'm still taller than you. We stick to <laughs> it's your hair. <laughs> usually in the morning, that's when we do our workbooks, our music, our science, our whatever, and then throughout the rest of the day, we gauge it however we want to gauge it. We don't do workbooks or anything like that, but we can do outings, we can go places, have book time. Uh, but my kids are still really young, so just like what Kieran said. We want to continue learning and growing through our day. It's not just a, a single time through our day that we do it. Kind of in the morning, that's when we're a little bit more structured with what we do. So I'm gonna go ahead, we're gonna break for lunch and then I'll show you guys a few more tools that uh, I use such as cards and some other things. And, and then we'll say peace out. Peace out. <laughs> Something I do wanna show you guys. Me and the kids have a calendar. It's super neutral and super blank, but we go over the days of the week, the months of the year, what day is it, what are we doing. This is something that you can start with your two-year-old and it'll take you through everything that they really need to know. Mama, and it gets to be the silence and it's five days. That's right, yeah. That's a vacation that'll come up soon. It'll go over everything that they need to know for a year and its structure and seasons and such. So it's such a simple thing to do. Uh, but if you got a two-year-old, I mean, start it now because it sticks now. But you like calendar time? Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I need the calendar. We actually yeah, are, do. We are gonna do the calendar at lunchtime. So can I do a kiwi box? We are homeschool parents because we have a map in our this is a gather like leather mat. It has the country of Canada on it, which is where we live. I really wanted to put a map here because this is our homeschool area and I want the kids to be more knowledgeable towards the provinces, the capital cities of the provinces and just how everything is kind of laid out. So we have that, we have maps downstairs. There's certain things that we've put throughout our house that are for schooling. One of them is the sign language alphabet on our gallery wall. This is how the kids are learning sign language. They can refer to this for all of the ASL and then me and Kieran also can refer to it as well while we're teaching them. But there's just certain things you can do as a homeschool mom or family that'll just be cool throughout the house and it'll help your kids learn a bunch of stuff. Here's the kids KiwiCo boxes. It's not sponsored. We do just buy these. They're so great. We do really enjoy them. And I, I think lastly, 
in these drawers and these are just so nice to have we have a ton of flash cards i'm the card lady i really really enjoy cards we have alphabet cards we have animal cards we have christian faith cards i feel like every homeschool family or just someone who's trying to teach their kids from home before like grade school and stuff cards are just a must have they're super needed so these are really cool we have them from pre-k all the way to grade three and basically what they are is sight words so me and ivy will go through them there's games you can play with them but i hold up a card to ivy i can see what it is on the other side of the card hey ivy can you can you help me show them how we do our sight cards Toy. Today, table. Can you use it in a sentence? We eat at the table. Yeah, that's good. Side. Sip. Sing. Signs. Soap. We'll go through all of these cards and they're double-sided. Thank you, Ivy. And they're just great to get the kids familiar with words, using them in a sentence. So awesome. In Canada, these are more expensive. So I order mine from Amazon in the States. And if you live in the States, you can get these for way cheaper than what I paid for them. And I highly recommend them. Thank you guys for watching and for being here. Let me know in a comment down below. Are you a homeschooling mom or do you like having your kids go to school? There should be no shame and no judgment in how someone schools their child as long as the child is getting proper education, lots of love and lots of encouragement. That is what matters. Thank you for watching today's video and I'll see you guys in my next one. Bye.